It's Kathy Sipple, and you are joining me today for the very first day of a series that I've created called Social Lights. This effort is a trial balloon that I'm sending up to, to go about creating a more conscious community online of light workers and people that feel called to make a difference in the world using their light and their special gifts on social media. And I'm just so excited to have <laughs> this all-star cast that's on so far and the rest of the people who have not yet joined. If you would like to just give a little um, message in the question area, just go ahead and type in a, a little chat. Tell me that you can hear me. Tell me where you're calling from. And maybe just a little bit about yourself, where, where you are and what you do. That would be great, and I'll share it with the group. So while you're doing that, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I have had the, uh, the opportunity to meet several of you, and I'm very grateful for that. But for those of you who don't yet know me, again, my name is Kathy Sipple, and I have been a social media coach for the last six years. I started my business uh, in February of 2009, and I didn't come into it from a marketing standpoint, actually, although I now have 25 plus years of sales and marketing experience. The whole way that I got into teaching social media was a very practical and personal reason. In July, uh, it was July 18th of 2008, I got a call from my sister Karen in Detroit, and she told me that our other sister, Julie, who was also in Detroit at the time, had lost consciousness and that if I wanted to see her, I should come. I still get very choked up by this, but she, you know, she might not make it. She had lost consciousness. Nobody knew what was wrong at that point. And my husband and I actually had tickets to see the Dalai Lama in Madison, Wisconsin on that day. And so we were up very early. We were up at you know, 4 or 4.30, had the car all packed. And when you get a phone call at 4.30 in the morning, you know it just can't be, can't be good. So I was there to pick up the phone, and instead of heading west on 94 to go to Madison, Wisconsin, we headed 94 east to Detroit and ended up spending several months there uh, just trying to do what we could for my sister and for my family, just lending support. I did an awful lot of Reiki. I had been a, a real estate agent prior to that time. I was really, quite frankly, ready to let it go, didn't know I was ready to let it go and the universe kind of gave me this opportunity slash scare that was a kick in the pants. I was just kind of flying free every day, didn't know exactly what I was supposed to be doing, but I knew that it involved trying to keep my sister with us because she is just such a beautiful light in this world. And the good news is uh, today, um, six and a half years later, she is with us and um, she is a light on social media herself. She blogs, she writes a newsletter for patient advocates, and does all kinds of great things. So in any case, what I did during that time in Detroit, which was a dark time for Detroit, 22% unemployment, um, you know, all these, I think, Lehman Brothers problems were coming out, um, you know, just many, many things, financial crisis. We were just living in the thick of it with no clue of what are we supposed to be doing with our career, with our living situation. And that's really when I discovered social media. It was to, at first, help my sister to actually reach out and find out who needed to know about her situation. She was in a coma, couldn't speak for herself. And I used social media to lift the veil and basically find out who she knew that needed to know this you know, very personal and sensitive information. And so to do that, I ended up developing a blog for her on a site called Care Pages. It's a patient blog site where you can share updates about um, you know, a person that you care about. We considered, my family considered every visit there, every post to be a prayer. And certainly it got us through some really, really dark times to have an online community and to be able to share in that way. So I was doing Reiki by day for my sister, um, eventually she did regain consciousness. She was in a coma for about a month. Um, it was just really many, many miracles layered upon miracles. But you know, in the meantime, during this dark time in Detroit, they were also going through a period of um, rebirth, trying to reinvent themselves, not being dependent on the auto industry. And one of the 
things they were embracing was actually social media, how they could retool, re-engage, and basically form connections and form community using social media. I grew up in the Detroit area, Northville, Michigan, kind of a western suburb of the, the Detroit area, and went to college in, at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I had been away for a long time. I knew I knew people there, but I had no idea where they were. So again, using social media, I was able to reconnect and you know, form relationships or reconnect with some old relationships, build new relationships, all with social media. So anyway, I don't want to keep going on and on about social media, but it's just I've personally gotten so much value out of it, and I've, I've met so many amazing people, and it actually has sustained me. It has been my business for the last six years, and I am blessed to have some of the clients and the opportunities that I've had. However, there's a part of me that wants to do something bigger. I, I don't want to have to talk corporate speak all the time. I want to bring some of my Reiki gifts into the world and um, you know connect with like-minded people. So I'll tell you just a little bit about the other people that are on the call today. We've got Colleen Devine, and she posts positive online just because it feels right. She says she's thrilled to be here. We've got Susan C., and she's here by telephone. Uh, let's see, Tina has shared that she's in San Francisco. She's a doctoral student and a Reiki master practitioner. She's grateful to be here with us. And her intention is light upon the darkness and illumination of inner and outer peace. So thank you for sharing that. If anybody else would like to share, please go ahead and just you know, type, type in the question area your name, where you're from, and just you know, what is your intention for the day, for this week, and um, you know, if you feel led, what would you like to get out of it? I've got some ideas of what I would like to give, what I think would be useful, but certainly if you've got something specifically that you'd like to know, I'd like to make this as interactive as possible, and um, we will do that. So again, the graphic that I've got on screen, hopefully everybody can see this beautiful graphic. It's, it says co-creative evolution, and there are five words or five phrases here, envisioning, empowering, community, infusing love and sustaining all. This was developed by an artist friend of mine that I have met excuse me, through the Chicago, Chicagoland Conscious Evolutionaries. And uh, her name is Kathy Hare. She's in Elgin, Illinois. And I asked her permission to share this on screen, and she was delighted. So you can find out more artwork from her uh, at brigadina.com. And she's got that cleverly stamped in the corner of this graphic. And that's actually one of the principles that I want to share today is um, you know, putting things out there online. The first intention, I think, should be peace and light and joy. You know, At least for our group, as we're coming together, that's what I hope to do with this group to empower. We're going to talk more about empowering tomorrow. But my vision is giving this group the tools that they need to spread your vision in the world. And you know, I think marketing doesn't have to be a schmarmy, yicky kind of thing. Even if you don't have anything to sell, as a matter of fact, online, we all are in some way selling ideas. And what I'd like to do is just give these ideas a place to be shared in a safe you know, community, a learning community, and a supportive community where you're going to be among like-minded people who want to join in and, um, and help you get the word out. So we just heard from Tammy. She is calling in from St. John, Indiana, and she's a founding member of the Chicagoland, Conscious Evolutionary Chicagoland. For some reason, I always get those words a little jumbled. But thanks so much, Tammy, for, for joining me. She's been a great light in my world, especially recently, and I'm thrilled to be working with her. OK, so in any case, again, not all of us need be marketers or entrepreneurs to be on this call and get something out of it. But please forgive me if I do bring some of that language into my talk, because that has been my background. And I'm, these are baby steps, frankly. I'm transitioning back into my Reiki self. I am a Reiki master teacher. I uh, began studying Reiki in 2000, and that's been a big part of my life for the past 15 years. I also very recently became an Access Bars practitioner, and I found that that's been a, a very interesting um, complement to Reiki. And uh, for those of you who don't know what Reiki is, it's a healing touch 
kind of a, an energetic modality. And there are some principles that I'm going to be, you know, kind of probably layering on throughout our talks. But basically with Reiki, you're working on energy. You're working on the chakras is the construct that we work with. And chakra in Sanskrit means wheel. So they're wheels of light that, uh, frankly, probably up until 15 years ago, I didn't acknowledge they were there. I didn't necessarily believe they were there. But just as you don't need to believe in electricity for it to light your home, you know, this energy is there and this light is there whether we acknowledge it um, or aware of it or not. So there, the, you know, jury is out on exactly how many chakras there are, but generally there are seven principal chakras that are aligned along your spine. So the root chakra is at the base of your spine. The color most often associated with it is red. And that has to do with, you know, grounding yourself with tribe, with home, with, you know, putting a, a roof over your head, with eating, you know, the connectedness, that kind of thing. So I often look at the chakras almost like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's, it's hard to have a peak experience, a transformational experience, you know, that's kind of more associated with the top of your chakras. Your divine chakra, or transpersonal chakra, is at the top of your head, and that's more about, you know, higher, higher level spirit stuff. And then the chakras in the middle, we're going to get to them, but, you know, there's your creative center, your sacral chakra, there's your um, solar plexus, your heart, your communication center, uh, your third eye, and, um, Oh boy, did I forget one? <laughs> All right, Reiki Masters, back me up here. I'm kind of um, act, actually doing this non-scripted, so I'm looking inside for, for these answers. And then you've got your divine chakra at the top of your head that, again, connects you to, to the divine, whatever that is for you. So I'm going to kind of start with the basics. I'm going to start with the rootedness. I think a lot of people on this call are called to help others and want to give, give, give. One key principle of Reiki is that there needs to be an energy exchange. And I know that I've got this in my, um, in my Reiki books, but I'm going to go ahead and put on screen the story. This is probably available on many, many different sites, not just this one. But um, in one version of the Reiki story, the master who ended up teaching many other people decided to go and give his gifts to to the beggars in a village, and he had spent, you know, seven years treating illnesses, and he kept seeing that the same faces kept coming back and coming back, and thought, I'm failing as a healer. But what he learned was that when you give your time and efforts away without some form of energy exchange, it, it doesn't empower people to go forth and do their, their own thing. So it doesn't have to be money. Energy can come in all kinds of ways. I did make um, an option available on the sign-up for this event that if somebody wanted to, to make a donation, that was certainly welcome and appreciated. And I, I do appreciate those of you who took that option. I want to say that um, be, part of my reason for, for making it that way was that I do need to have money in order to accomplish some of the goals that I want to do in the world. One of the financial goals that I've got is actually to help Conscious Evolutionary Chicagoland. So I've actually got um, an option on the sign-up sheet that had I added this after afterwards. It was a $40 option, and that actually gets you a one-year membership to Conscious Evolutionary Chicagoland. So if, if that feels of interest to you, I see that, oops, the sales are marked as ended because we started today. I'm going to go ahead and open that back up. But if that's something that you'd like to explore, you know, you're certainly welcome to do that. This is not um, meant to be a, a sales job, though. Again, energy, money is just one kind of energy, okay? There are many other different kinds of energy. You can give the energy of intention. You can give the energy of what I'd like to suggest that we use as currency for, for the purposes of this week is being very engaged in the sharing, learning what to do with social media, and then helping me to get the word out because many hands lighten the load and when you've got light workers being those hands out in the world we can make more people aware of what we're doing here and I do plan to do this again when we do it next time 
I, I'm going to ask those of you who feel that this is a good idea after we've exchanged a little energy to, you know, to help me get that message out. And that's a perfectly acceptable currency that I would love to, to utilize. If that's you know, what you're capable and willing to give, that would be of tremendous, tremendous help and import. So your social currency is, is huge. And that's certainly something that I honor, recognize, and feel blessed by. But again, for those of you who are interested and would like to know more uh, about Chicago, uh, I, I still keep getting this mixed up, Chicagoland Conscious Evolutionaries, you can get there right from the, um, the Eventbrite page. I'm going to go ahead and flash it on screen right now. So Conscious Evolutionaries Chicagoland. I don't know why I still keep moving these words around periodically. But they are just really doing some neat, neat work in Chicago. They are not the only group like this, uh, but they are one of the frontier or pioneering groups that is doing it in, in the world. And it's, it's kind of centered around the work of Barbara Marks Hubbard. She actually foresaw the internet, or social media, I should say, before it existed. I bought a book that she wrote called Conscious Evolutionaries back in, um, gosh, I think, 98, 99 very pre-Facebook, and she talked about this thing called the noosphere, the thinking layer of the Earth, and envisioned a way that we could all be connected. And lo and behold, I feel like I am living that prophecy today. This is exactly what I feel you know, led to do in the world, and that is, in fact, what we are here to do in the world. So I was very honored to be recognized by this. Um, oh, OK, Lisa's telling me that she's not seen the, images. OK. I'm so sorry, Lisa. Thank you. Yes, I have been showing images, and I forgot to um, move or remove the uh, sharing screen. So if I have been talking about things that you didn't see, that is why. So thanks for that. OK, so I'm just showing the uh, Conscious Evolutionary Chicagoland screen. And I would invite all of you to, to check them out, especially those of you in the Chicago area. They are doing some you know, brick and mortar events. They're getting together on, on things where you can come and be a part of it. They are also doing some really neat um, calls with you know, very famous authors, speakers, and things like that. So I, I feel like I want to support their work. And again, uh, to financially be able to give to them, I need to sometimes ask for you know, financial input. So in any case, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that for now. And I do want to announce a few other stories of people who have listed in the, the chat window uh, what their background is. Whoops, OK. Oh, dear. OK. I just had a little change up on the screen. My apologies. OK. All right, well, when that, let me just go ahead and do these announcements while my computer is figuring itself out. Okay, that's from the South Bend area. And she says, I have realized a taste of the power of social media. I'm returning to using words, writing, and stories as a way to help people reconnect to themselves, each other, and the earth. I also have a Reiki level two attunement, but little training with it, and hope to incorporate that into my work. I'm looking forward to meeting and networking with others who understand the importance of these things. Thank you so much for sharing that, Lisa. And I love your, uh, your screen name, I think, is The Savory Muse. I'm not sure if that's your blog name, too, but I think that's just such a great, great name. And Susan has written that she is in Michigan City. Her background is in law. She is not working on her empath gifts. Her desire is to be involved with raising the consciousness of the world. And uh, thank you. Thank you you so much for sharing that. OK. <laughs> all right, so the unpredictability of the internet. This is part of the test that happened uh, with all these things. I, uh, OK, I've lost my vision on screen. This is a little nutty. It said that uh, Microsoft's color scheme was changing, and now all of a sudden I'm looking at a white screen. So you know what? Rather than panic, I'm just going to take this as um, I'm going to take this as a sign from the universe that we just need to blank out our minds. We need to blank out um, you know, the, the visuals and just go inward to think. I'm not sure if that's real, if that's what it is, but that's how I'm going to take it. <laughs> I was about to launch us into a, a unique how-to experience and show you some things on screen, but um, I, I do believe in the wisdom of, of 
feedback, crowd, just being in the moment. So I'm willing to suspend my plan to just go with what seems to be useful and needed in the moment. Okay, so a few notes that I've jotted down today. Number one, it's Martin Luther King Day today, and I think that he was such an amazing light in the world. And um, part of the process that I wanted to show you today was just how to go about finding the information that you want to share. And I thought in honor of Martin Luther King Day, um, I would take a look at some of the quotes that he's put out there. And there was one that said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And so I just thought, that's, that's a great um, quote, I believe, to start for a group that's dedicated to light workers and a group that is dedicated to putting good stuff out there. So you know what, I'm going to tap into another principle of um, online sharing, and that is crowdsourcing. This is a way that you can pay me back with energy. Do I have a volunteer that would be willing to show their screen? Because I can actually give, um, I think I can give the keyboard or mouse to another person. Uh, you might have to be in a, no, you know what, you might have to be a presenter. Okay. You know what? Maybe I'll I'll make one of you a presenter for a future future thing, but for today that might not be possible. Okay. Um, anyway, what this is going to be really interesting to do this without a visual, <laughs> but let me go ahead and and have you try this. Um, okay. Have you heard of Canva.com? It's C-A-N-V-A.com. It's, it's kind of like an artistic designer canvas that lets you create really beautiful um, buttons, Facebook graphics, uh, Pinterest pins, all kinds of neat stuff. And I created one with this Martin Luther King button today. So let me just see if I can possibly get out of this browser and into another, if that will work for me. Wow, is that ever crazy? Okay. I've been up since 4.30, and I've been online. Everything's been showing up, and now, <laughs> OK, looks like I've got a visual back. So thanks for your patience. Never had that happen. Um, OK. Well, this might not be the time that I'm going to be uh, sharing the video unless I do some heavy editing, but uh, that's all right. Canva.com, I'm so excited to find this, this tool. And by the way, it is totally free. So I think that you know free is obviously very good, especially for those of us that are just doing this out of the goodness of our hearts and you know don't have a revenue model associated with a specific uh, effort. So basically, you you can just sign up for it by connecting with Facebook, and I think that's how I have done it already. So let's just get in here. There's a design school. I'm not going to take you through that since you can do this on your own time, but um, I'll give you just some quick you know, quick things to show you what I've done. If you click on Design School, it will actually walk you through how to use the, the different tools. So that's real neat. Um, this is one that I created to share today. The way that this piece came together was that I first just did a Google search on, you know, it came into my mind, today is Martin Luther King Day. And, you know, I would say the step before the step is set your intention. I think that a lot of garbage ends up getting out there on social media just because people haven't taken that first step of setting an intention, you know, to be present, to be aware, or they don't know why they're there. They're just flailing around. They're a broadcaster. And, you know, I think when you're a broadcaster instead of a co-creator, it just feels um, very ego-based. It feels like, listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> But if your desire is to elevate, to share, to inspire, you know, set that intention first, and then I think everything else just comes so much more easily. And those of us on the call that might not be, um, you know, naturally, you know, extroverts or promoters, when you feel that you're just being a vessel for information, it brings about a whole different kind of energy and um, results, frankly. And I, I credit my Reiki training with my ability today to be a public speaker. Back in high school, I actually would have considered myself very much an introvert. I was terrified to speak in front of people. And the reason, I think, was that I thought it was about me. 
And through my work as a Reiki master, I have learned that I'm a vessel. And when I just am a, a vessel for divine energy and divine information flow, then that really takes a lot of the pressure off. It, I don't have to be perfect. I, I already am perfect. I'm perfect in the way that my creator made me. And all I need to do is clear stuff out of the way and tune into my divine, you know, higher purpose. And then it's not at all ego. It's just I'm tapping into the universal consciousness and being a part of that. So anyway, that really works for me. And I hope that that little secret might, you know, work for you too. Anyway, so intention. That, that actually is step number one before you go looking for quotes, before you go looking for images, any of that stuff. So let me just pause here for a second and see what we've got as far as questions. I think there might be some questions. All right, let me see. Hmm. Okay, hands raised. Uh, here we go, questions. I lost my question board for a second. Okay, no, it looks like we're pretty caught up. Thank you for the questions that have come or the offers of help. <laughs> All right, so first we've got intention. Second, we've got a specific tool. So, you know, I think we're going to be going back and forth from, you know, metaphysics and intention setting and then really the specificity of how to get it done. This by no means is the only way to get it done, but I think it's a great, great tool and especially things that are free. I felt like this was very intuitive. I was able to put something together in a way that didn't require me to go to design school or have a lot of background. But let's just, um, I'm going to create another one from scratch. Does anybody have a great quote that they feel is kind of a light worker quote? It doesn't have to be Martin Luther King, but that would certainly be a, a bonus. If you've got a quote that you would like to, to do, go ahead and type that in the question area. And meanwhile, I'm going to going to create yet another one. What I want to do today is get you thinking about the how to create, what to create, and then we'll be practicing this stuff as we go. So let me just say Martin Luther King quote. And I know the man has obviously said a lot of great stuff, but I just want to find out one that, uh, you know, maybe really resonates with what we're focusing on today. Okay, let's see. Life's most persistent and urgent question. What are you doing for others? You know what? I, I kind of like that one. I'm going to go with that. I'm not going to look too hard or too far. I'm going to just say that's right. Okay, so what I've done there is I just did a Google search. I think everybody here probably knows how to do a Google search at this point. I did a click, drag, copy. That's kind of what was going on that you might not have noticed. And I see that I can actually use Share as Image right from here. That actually is another very similar tool to Canva.com. And I like that very much. I own a copy of that already. It's not free, however, so I'm going to just stick with the free option for right now. But this obviously makes it very, very easy for me to do. If I wanted to share this thing as an image right from here, I can just simply click on Pinterest. And I've not tried it right from the site, but let's see. I can share on Facebook, share on Twitter. There are some sites that are set up to be much more shareable than others. and. Um, it's, it's taken a while, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that for now and just get back to Canva. Okay, so what I want to do is um, we're going to do a new, a new pin. I'm going to pin something or just make a, a social media update that can be shared on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, wherever, because I didn't make participation on any certain social media site, uh, you know, prerequisite for attending today. But if, if you like Pinterest, it's kind of a, a neat place to curate information. So what are you doing for others? Let's just, let me see if I can find a Martin Luther King photo. That might be too specific, but we'll see. So there are a number of images that you can use for free on, um, on Canva. When you hover over the image, it will tell you if it's a paid image, all their paid images cost $1. So it looks like all of these are actually a dollar. I'm trying to keep this kind of a low budget right now. So let's just do um, something a little bit more broad service. What are you doing to serve others? OK, this one might kind of work. Um, you know, it's not totally my favorite, but it, 
it's it's free. It it works. I'm going to go ahead and just do this for now. Um, whoops. Okay, I accidentally put it on put it on several times. And I just want you to I want you to see too that I mean I make mistakes. <laughs> um, making mistakes and being okay with that is just part of it's kind of hard, part of how I roll. I don't see that as a, a problem because doing this stuff, you need to be um, willing to embrace new technology and just be okay with like what's the worst thing that can happen. All the stuff is is pretty new to all of us. Even me, who uses it, you know, fairly regularly, I don't use it all the time. I've used this tool for you know less than two weeks. So, am I perfect at it? No. But do I think you can master it? Do I think I can master it? Absolutely, I do. So let's just pick. First, we're just going to pick a grid. That's probably the best way to start. A grid just gives you um, a basis for how you want to put your text and your images together. So let's go ahead and we're just going to pick a, a simple square. Now what I've got is just the default image here. And I'm going to say, let's go ahead and do a background. And the background is something on, I want to use service. OK. So again, this is the one that I chose before. It's very small, but this is what's called a vector image. So I can actually blow this up and make it bigger. It's not, you know, a particularly exciting image, but I could could move this in back of this guy and then delete it. I'm going to delete this other thing I had going. Whoops. All right. Sorry about that. I deleted my original pen. Okay. Here we go. So I've got something that looks like service. And now what I want to do is I want to add some text. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab a little bit of text or a box where I can put some text. And I'm just choosing one of these options from over here on the left. I'm going to go ahead and um, let's try this. This might not even be the best one, but <clears throat> I'm going to go with it. I can move this thing forward, back. I can uh, change the transparency. Right now, it's um, OK. <laughs> Scary to do this on the fly, I'll tell you. There we go. I'm going to just keep it the way it is for now and not change so many variables. OK, now what I want to do is I want to replace the text that's here and put in text that I copied. Oh, dear. OK, way too big, way, way too big. But um, this is the text that I copied into my uh, memory before when I was on that Martin Luther King site. Yeah, and it is just way, way, way too long to be meaningful. So, OK. Do you have any volunteers here? I can see that multitasking while trying to teach is not going to work great. <laughs> but um, anyway, this, this is homework for tomorrow. I'm going to do my own homework as well. But basically, I would love for you to go on to canva.com. I'm not going to try to do this in real time because I see it is a little bit, um, it's a little bit crazy. But to create a free account on canva.com and to create a post that we can all use for social sharing tomorrow. So let me just go back to my own designs and I'll show you one that I, I did finish. This is one I did pretty quickly and easily this morning by the things that I'm telling you, but obviously not I'm kind of using two hands and being a little bit more intentional about it. Again, step was set the intention. What's what's the light that I'm trying to show in the world? What is the um, what is a quote that I like, or do I have one of my own? Okay, you can do a Facebook banner. So the banners that go above people's um, you know, Facebook groups or Facebook cover images. I did one that's long in this way. By choosing the proper layout, you can get it to be sized to the right thing. So if you want to pin it, if you want to, you know, do it for your own cover, that's great. You can use the same graphic in a number of different ways. And then the other thing that I want to show you that's important for social sharing is, you know, if you're trying to be part of a movement, use some kind of a hashtag. And I would love it, this is again the way that you can energetically pay me back, is to use social lights in, as your hashtag on the graphics that you create. 
and what we're doing there is we're creating a conversation that is more than a one-person conversation. It's more than one person being a broadcaster. It's people branding their, their tweets or their Facebook post or their Instagram post or even Pinterest with a hashtag that says, hey, I'm part of a tribe. I am part of a group conversation. That's what a hashtag does. And I actually have created a, a webinar previously <clears throat> called What the Heck is a Hashtag and Why Should I Care? So it tells you a little bit more about you know, how to use hashtags in uh, much more detail. Um, for those of you who are confused by what's going on, I, I was working in Google Chrome and for some reason that crashed. So I'm having to start all of my windows new in, in uh, Explorer, which I don't normally use. OK. So here we go. We've got um, this is the behavior that I'd love for you to model by tomorrow, if possible. And honestly, when things are going well and your you know, browser's not crashing, this does not take <laughs> a tremendously long amount of time to do these steps. But let's just pick one that I've done. Um, let's see. Well, this is one that I created for, for this group. So once you've created your, you know, your post, you can share it. You can just click up here. You can do share. You can do download. You can make it public. And so if everybody by tomorrow could, again, sign up for canva.com, free account, choose a free graphic, choose a quote that you like, and you know, put a hashtag on it, we will look at how to share tomorrow. So we're going to do more community building tomorrow. Um, any questions? Let me just take a look at what you've got. Um, oh, Lisa, that's a good one. Only in darkness can you see the stars. That's another MLK quote. I love that. Choose love and do not let fear steal your playful heart or something like this as posted by Jim Carrey. That was from Colleen. I love that too. So are you guys willing to do that? Let me see if, if you feel like you think you can take that on and try that by tomorrow. If your answer is no, you're not off the hook, <laughs> there will still be you know, ways that you can participate. Or if you just don't have the time, honestly, to get that done by tomorrow, don't feel that, oh boy, I can't show up on Tuesday. I'm going to have a series of things that you know, can be shared by all. But I just thought if we can co-create these, that would be even better. Because it shouldn't be my take on light in the world. It should you know, definitely be all of our collective ideas about how to share light in the world. And just to keep it focused on one thing for now, I would love it if we could use that hashtag social lights so that we can co-brand and create you know, a bigger beacon out there in the world. Now, all these tools that you're learning, let me just kind of jump to say what's in it for you. Besides getting the good feeling of being a light in the world, you can obviously start your own movement. You could start your own brand. You could start your own project. And you can use these same principles to promote that. So for you know, Conscious Evolutionary Chicagoland, I would love to see them you know, have a hashtag and utilize it. Um, all right, thanks, Lisa. She's stepping up. She says she'll fumble around with it. Thanks for showing us Canva.com. <laughs> I love it. So you know, think about all the different ways that you can use this. And the reason that I wanted to start with Canva is that you know, socially shared images that have, or excuse me, updates that have images are much more likely to be shared and engaged with than just straight text. You know, people are visual, and people like to kind of have that picture painted for them, right? So um, good stuff that you can also get feedback. If anybody has a Facebook page, Colleen, thank you. She said this is something that she can try for tomorrow. Great to learn from someone willing to say they don't know it all. And I am willing to say that, Colleen. So thank you for affirming that, that that's OK to do. Um, I am also a huge podcast fan. And I can't remember what podcast it was, but it was like the three hardest words for people to say. It was like, I don't know. <laughs> and I feel that I can say that pretty easily, actually, and be OK with it, because um, I do know a lot. But there are also ends to what I know and what I don't know today. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to know it for tomorrow. And I feel that by um, you know, continuously exploring and having kind of a pioneer spirit in that regard, for me it's fun. And to do it with other people that also think it's fun, I love that. So thanks for being a co-pioneer. 
And um, another thing I want to say, this is looking ahead to, to what we're going to be talking about is, um, you know, okay, we think about, great, we're going to create content, and creating content is certainly a big part of what we're doing. Hashtagging it can get you out in the world and let you share a little bit. Um, for those of you on the call, can I ask who is on Twitter? Because I want to do a Twitter experiment, but just, you know, give me a little, yes, I'm on Twitter. Or actually, put your Twitter ID on there, and then I'm going to follow you if I'm not. Okay, so Barbara's on, Lisa's on, great. The Savory Muse is Lisa, wonderful. Colleen's never been on Twitter, no problem. Okay, Tammy, I think I'm following you already. But let me, let me ask you this, if you guys can help me out here. If you can sign on to Twitter for those of you who are, and for those of you who are not, Carly, so great to, to see you. It's been a long time. Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to go on here. Um, I'm not trying to force anybody on here who doesn't want to be on Twitter. There are many, many different ways to participate, so don't, don't worry about that at all. Whoops, that's not you, Carly. I am Carly Grace. Okay. I think I'm following you already. I should be. Yeah, I am. So here's Carly. Um, she's a wonderful woman who I met in Chicago at an internet event, Internet Profits, I think. That was kind of a good one. So you're not using it very much at this time. That's okay. For somebody that's not using it very much, you already have a thousand plus followers, so that's pretty cool. Tina is a uh, Carner Blue era. Tina, I think, is just, this is so neat. I'm going to give her a little shout out. Um, she is an economic development person who, oops, Carner Blue Era, I put wrong thing here, Carner Blue Era, okay, who also, economic development and Reiki person. So I just think like, gosh, we really need more people like her out there in the world, people that are talking to municipalities, talking to community leaders who have that light worker mentality. So I just, I am so thrilled to work with her and see what she's doing out there in the world. Okay, so if, oh, and I'm not following you? How am I not following you? I'm going to go ahead and click follow. It's as easy as that to follow somebody on Twitter. What I want to say, too, is, okay, we have creating content. We have connecting with people. And we have other things beyond that. But this is what we're going to be focusing on. If you're creating great content, but you're connected to nobody, it's going to be really hard to get the social out there in social media. So obviously, start wherever you are. You know, start with connecting to the people that um, you know you already have a real life relationship with. But you know, as you feel led to do so, and you feel the comfort to do so, stretch a little bit. Have a stretch goal. Reach out and follow somebody on Twitter or on Instagram or Pinterest or you know even Facebook. You can follow people without asking them to be friends, especially um, you know public. Uh, public celebrity kind of people, that, that kind of stuff. You can like a Facebook page. Uh, you can link on LinkedIn. That's a little deeper. But you can follow a company. There's all kinds of things you can do. But for anybody who is on Twitter, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and follow me, that would be the easiest way. Then I can follow you back. You get notifications when uh, people have followed you, so you can see who's, uh, who's doing that. And, okay, it doesn't look like anybody from this call right this minute, but if there's a new one, go ahead. And then for anybody who is able and willing to do so, let's, let's give this a real-time experiment. Um, you know, homework for tomorrow, again, is just we're going to collectively create some content. But what I'm going to do here is share this last design that I did on Twitter, and I would love it if anybody who's on and feels led to do so, man, where am I? Okay. I think maybe I accidentally got rid of that um, that piece. All right, bummer. <laughs> okay, no big deal. Let me just create a new one. Don't cry over lost pins. That's okay. All right. So I am going to use um, let's use Colleen's quote that she gave me. We might make more than or Lisa, this one's easy. Only in darkness can you see the stars. That's, that's a super easy one. So I already had a picture of stars up here. Let's go ahead and use that. I'm going to drag out some text. And just to make it really easy, I'm going to choose something that's got a background on it already. Now, it doesn't have to be green. Okay, I can change that color. 
let's go ahead and um, grab this guy. I'm going to change the color to something that fits a little bit better. You can hit the plus sign, or excuse me, you can hit the, um, oh dear. OK, let's just go with blue. We're going to make it easy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to type here only, oh dear. OK, I don't know why that's coming. Of course, it's never come up before. Only in darkness can you see the stars. So while I'm doing this, those of you who are on Twitter who have an account and are willing to help me out, go ahead and sign on. I know for me, sometimes that means <laughs> remembering a password or what have you. But um, Martin Luther King Jr., OK. You can also change the, the size of the text right here, OK? So if it's not coming out quite the way you want, you can make that bigger, smaller, whatever. All right. Easier if you go to design school, and easier if you're not um, trying to do it while you're leading a webinar, <laughs> definitely. But that's OK. Oh, I see what I did. I didn't have the entire thing selected. I only had the first couple letters. Oh, dear. Let me just. Okay, this is kind of cheating, but I'm just going to redo it. Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, fine. That's you know good enough for our purposes. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do here is just add the hashtag social lights. One quick thing about hashtags: it doesn't really much matter, um, upper or lower case, but I just think because they're two L's right together, it might show up a little bit more easily by capitalizing the second L. It's not necessary. So what I can do right from here is to share this, and I'm going to go ahead and tweet it. It's uh, preparing the design to be shared on Twitter. And share it now. OK, so this is how easy it's supposed to be when Windows is not conspiring against you and that kind of thing. <laughs> So instead of using their promotional tweet, I just made this fantastic design with Canva. What I'm going to do instead is a couple of things to make this um, a bit more elegant looking and, and less you know, spammy. Of course, you know, I love Canva. They're putting out good stuff, and I hope I can do good things for them. But I'm not going to make this particular tweet about them. Another tool I want to show you is a link shortener. And the one that I kind of like is bit.ly. Okay, because uh, Twitter can't actually put a photo right on there. They need to reference a link that stores the photo. And when I did this before, share, tweet, oh, okay, I had it up and I lost it. There's a really, really long this is this whole URL right here, and URL just stands for Universal Resource Locator, um, is what would be required to show people on Twitter this image. I'm taking up 85 characters, and you only get 140 characters. Okay, so I would rather conserve my real estate, use less space for the graphic, and so I'm going to paste it into the link shortener. That gives me a very small little link that basically does the same thing. Let me just show you, or I want to prove that to you. If I paste that shortened link into my browser, it's going to take me right back to Canva where that, where that thing is shared. Okay? And so um, I'm going to go ahead and just like this right where I am. I apologize for this pop-up. I don't know why that's happening. Okay, and join time together with light workers. OK, and I'm going to go ahead and put in social lights. And because social lights is kind of a new hashtag, even though we're ramping up, um, you know, talk about that, it, you know, we're the only ones doing it. OK, we've got, I think, nine of us out of the 18 signed up are on there today. So what I'm going to also do is just put on an MLK, all right? Because it's MLK day today, um, that will probably generate some relevance and some, you know, for, for the day's events. I would only put a hashtag in there if it, if it truly does support whatever, you know, you're trying to do. Okay, now why did 
you guys saw me put that social lights hashtag on there, and now it doesn't appear to be there. That's a little annoying, but such is life. <laughs> Good thing we're not going to do this. Here's principle number whatever we're on, three, four. Don't give up. You know, if you get it a little bit wrong one day, you don't get every single thing perfect, it's not the end of the world, okay? Social media is free. It's not like taking an ad out in the New York Times where it's, you know, hey, we, we're putting thousands or however, tens of thousands of dollars into one ad or you're buying Super Bowl ad space. It's free except for your time. So if you didn't get it quite exactly right the first time, go ahead and try it again. You know, just keep making it better and better and better. And I think that principle of Kaizen or continuous improvement really bodes well here. But so many people, if they just get confused on the technology, might give up before they get started. So this is what I want to show you is it's OK to make mistakes. You're more likely to get back up on the horse if you've got a supportive community to kind of coach you through it, help you through it, and witness that they also make mistakes sometimes. Okay, So I hope that that's a you know, tang tangential benefit that I can give. So let me just pause for questions here and see what's going on. OK, oh, this makes me feel better that somebody else forgot their password. <laughs> OK, so Lisa's got a question. So when you create in Canva, do you need to save it somewhere like Pinterest, or is it a good idea to archive things that way? You know what? I think beginning with the end in mind is a really, really good idea. Um, if you want to, let's say, create a lot of content and release it slowly over time, then you might want to store it in a place like Canva. There's actually a little lock on it that you can either make it public or make it private. And so if, if you wanted to, like, I kind of tend to find that I get work done a little bit more um, effectively when I time block. And so what I mean by that is I might spend 30 minutes during the month just brainstorming, saying what is it that I want to put out there in the world this, you know, this week, this month, this quarter? What does that look like? Is it a project? And then maybe search for images that have to do with that project or search for quotes that have to do with that project. I might then spend time putting it together on Canva. And I just get into a Canva mode store them on Canva, but then choose one image each day or each week to kind of be the image. So you could actually make it public each day. Uh, but you know, so that's one way to do it. Again, it does depend on your intention. Um, Pinterest, I think, is kind of a cool way to pre-share it without really having to do a whole lot of work. I mean, you can put it out there on Pinterest. You can put it on a board. And by the way, I did create a Pinterest board. I'm going to show you that next. I know I'm kind of showing you a lot right now, but um, don't worry. We're going to bring this together, make sense of it. Let me just try, um, instead of sharing, I'm going to try downloading this guy and see if that makes any difference at all. Oh, oh shoot. You know what? OK. Uh, I don't have my credit card up on this thing. I guess I chose a not free image already. Whoops. OK. It's just not going my way. That's all right. Let's just go with what we've got as of right now. Um, so Tina, if you are on Twitter, if you would be willing to retweet what I'm going to put out there, that would be awesome. Or you know what? For right now, let's just not even worry too much about uh, an image. Let's just say. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Let me see if you're figuring it out. Tina's worked with me. I think she can kind of <laughs> go with some of my on the cusp, cutting edge stuff. Let's see what she's got. All right, so what I'm going to do here to see if any of you guys are tweeting anything that has to do with social lights is I am going to put up in my search bar social lights and just do a quick scan. OK, so I had done this. This is my post that I did. Um, a couple days ago on January 10th. And even though I didn't have a lot of people who were you know, in on it yet, actually, somebody did retweet it. It was, uh, let me see, did you unwrap? No, it's OK. So you know what? Don't even worry about the, the image right now, since I, I didn't realize I had used um, a for purchase image. But if you can just type up it, a post, or you know what, I will do that much. I will do that much for you guys. Let me also double check the MLK. That was kind of a intuitive. I, I'm pretty sure that's a hashtag. Yes, it is. OK, great. Yep, people are using it. If you're going to 
make a hashtag or put a hashtag on your um, on your tweet or on any kind of a post. I'm saying tweet right now just because we're concentrating on Twitter. Um, you know, make sure either that you've got some juice behind it that you intend to kind of care and feed that hashtag and give it some attention, or that it's already one that's in use. So Socialites, again, is the one that we're using uh, together. You can also start your own, which is just fine. Okay, I know we're coming up at the end of our time together, so I really want to at least get one little guy done here. Let me just go ahead, instead of fooling with the image today, which I really wanted to do, but we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to use Lisa's suggestion, only in the darkness can you see the stars. And this would be really cool if it had the image, but that's okay. We're going to just say MLK, and then we're going to use social lights. All right. This would be much more beautiful if I had the, the image, but that's all right. Let's just do it. Done is better than perfect. So let's go ahead and tweet. And for anybody on there, Tina, if you can just go to my page, here's a quick and easy way that you can share information, is just retweet. If you're on Twitter, you can just click those two little arrows that look like kind of a recycling symbol and that will retweet. So if you're not on Twitter, that's okay too. You can put the same thing out on, on Facebook. Again, it would be much more beautiful if we had the image. And if you still want to do that for bonus points, that's great. But let's, as a community, just search out who's using social lights hashtag today. Give them a retweet. Okay, I see Barbara, Barbara Kane. Thank you so much. Barbara retweeted. So this is pretty cool. Already, here we go. And Barbara's got, you know, 253 followers, so wonderful. She's, she's retweeting. It kind of amps up your signal, you see? It's just really neat how you can put out one thing, and by working together with a group of people, you can really not make it look so much like a broadcaster. So this makes my heart so happy. Even with all those missteps, you guys managed to come through. We got a retweet from Tina, a retweet from Barbara, a retweet from Lisa, and a retweet from Conscious Evolutionary Chicagoland. So I hope that you're not totally, um, you know, befuddled and giving up on your somewhat dappy instructor. <laughs> but um, I, you know, just am excited to show you these tools. We will get better and better as the week progresses. And uh, thank you for all the comments, too, for your participation on Twitter. I'm going to look at Facebook once we wrap up. But I know we're right at 8 o'clock. So Again, thank you, and I promise tomorrow I will get rid of those pop-ups on my computer, and I'll have my own graphics ready, be ready to share your graphics as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we co-create. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Go forth and do light in the world.